We all know I was going to have something to say about this. Yodale, yodale, yodale. Hi! It was the Love Island final, and I have some thoughts and opinions on this and this entire season. I shall also be enjoying myself a McMuffin breakfast. Ah, Nah, I'm sorry, I don't care if you call me vile. McDonald's ever released a sausage and egg McMuffin candle? The smell is divine, it's delicious, it's something that Dip Teak and Joe Malone could ever wish that they could capture the evanescence smell that fills your nostrils up as the same as a hot sausage and egg McMuffin on a Tuesday morning! Anyway, yes, the Love Island was last night. I actually, personally, in my own humble opinion, all opinions are my own and are not associated with any party that I am associated with, thought it was a great season. I thought for the first time, this felt like old Love Island. It even for once finished with a good ending. I swear, usually Love Island, it goes west. I don't know where these people crawl out under the woodwork from to be able to come and vote with the couple that no one wanted to win. I say that this is the same country that voted trigger warning Boris and trigger warning Brexit. So how can we hold them to that much accountability? I should never be surprised when it comes to the great British general public. These are also the same people who voted Matt Cardle to win over Rebecca Ferguson and One Direction. That alone is enough to know to not trust the great British public when it comes to a vote. But they pulled through for once. We had a happy ending. I don't care what anyone has to say. I now understand my mother's generation why they're so obsessed with Princess Diana because Ek and Sue is our generation's princess. Princess Diana. This love story is crazy. I want this adapted to a Netflix rom-com starring at least one of Jennifer Aniston or Adam Sandler. It needs to be happened. It will be a box office smash. And for my good sister Ekin Sue, I don't even want her to stoop to fashion deals. I want to see her on billboards. I want to see her in fragrance commercials. Her walking out of the final was given expensive fragrance ad. It was given new face of J'adore by Dior. J'adore. I want to see her at Cannes Film Festival. Do you know what I mean? I want greatness for Ekin Sue. She doesn't give me Ekin Sue ex Missy Empire. Ekin Sue ex Miss Pap. She doesn't need to collaborate with a brand. Ekin Sue is her own brand. But Davide, I'm very much seeing a slot on this morning. A, a slot on this morning. I'm seeing him cooking up his carbonara while Philip Schofield swoons over him while slurping it. Oh, that sounded disturbing. They deserved it, Ekin Sue and Davide. They provided us with so much entertainment. They needed that 50k just to cover like an entertainment service fee. I want night shift on damehood or whatever the hell that's called by the end of this year the service that they have shown towards this country in the entertainment industry did start to get a little bit shaky though when it got to that final two and me i don't know why it took so long to get to that result i don't know why we had to sit through so many ads it's almost like the itv producers had a klana debt to pay off but oh my god i felt like i had aged 72 years by the time it got to that final i'd bloody forgotten who was in the final by the time we got to the results it took that long nation was gripped when I got to that final two. The Fiat 500's claws, their acrylic ombre nails, were clenched into their velvet crushed headboards in terror and fear. Football Twitter were crying into their pillows in their New York wallpaper themed bedrooms after last night's results. And I'm happy for it. Listen, okay, I don't want to talk about Luca too much. I've had so much to say about him over on Twitter. I'm sure you all know my opinion on him by now. More frankly, opinion on all the men this season. Also think as a cis man who watches the show and is so vocal on the show, it would be weird for me to not bring up the fuckery of this season. Jordan Teresa did a fantastic video on the misogyny on this season. I'm not gonna go into as much detail as her, but if you wanna watch it, I really recommend. I'll leave it linked in the description box down below. So I do wanna do a longer video about Love Island as a whole, but I don't know if people wanna see it. I wanna know if people actually wanna see it before I start working on it. Anyway, back to this season. Do I think that Luca and Gemma don't like each other? No, I do think that they are in love. Do I think Gemma's a bad person? No, but it was just so disheartening seeing Luca and I guess Dami as well beating Tasha after they relentlessly bullied her for an entire season. Because I'm not gonna lie, as much as I said it was a great season and it felt like old Love Island, there was a good one or two weeks where I almost stopped watching, which... You know something that is fucked up if I'm almost stopping watching Love Island? Like, it was very uncomfortable. <coughs> It was very uncomfortable viewing and I know that people can be like, oh, it's edited. Oh, it says you only see 45 minutes of 24 hours of the day. At the end of the day, sure, they can edit a tone. They can edit someone's facial expression over something. If the words are leaving your mouth, they cannot edit that. They're not voicing over you like it's Cartoon Network. And all that I'm hoping from this is that you can just learn from this and not be such a prick to women. What actually got to me the most out of everything was the double standard. If you treated the men the same way that you treated a woman, it'd be like, oh, he's just a bully. But no, he, it's, a, it's a misogynistic bully. Because the double standards were wild. And actually, I'm really glad that we finally got the conversation going about this because the double standards on Love Island have been fucked for a while. If you look back to season four, you had Adam Collard who 
must be in the Guinness World Book of Records for how many women he can get through in the fortnight. Also, Adam Collard coming back was the biggest twist that didn't twist ever. It was boring. I don't know if he was on there to redeem himself. He was like there on probation. I forgot he was there. And every time he came up on my screen, I kept being like, oh my God, I forgot Adam Collard was there. God. Back to what I was saying. Megan Barton Hansen in the same season doing the same thing and the public hailed her. They put her through the front of the mill. It just did make me sad because I, I know it's a British public vote so Love Island can do anything about it. But like, was actually shocked when Tasha was announced as fourth, I audibly gasped. I was like, not my Tasha and Andrew, not my baby. Michael Owen, I, I, I will need to see your phone bills and quickly. So many, how many SIM cards you've started with EE so to have different numbers to votes because something's not adding up. The math ain't mathin'. Tasha and Andrew. Oh! I think it's one of my favorite Love Island couples ever, which I did not fucking expect. But do you know how cute they were in those last few weeks? I'm not a lovey dovey person. A lovey dovey makes it. Lovey dovey stuff comes down on Love Island. I'm making a cup of tea. I'm getting a Diet Coke out the fridge. The volume's going on three. I'm scrolling through TikTok. But there was something about Tasha and Andrew that made me want to watch. And if there's one thing about Tasha, Tasha was serving you a look every episode that season. I want her with multiple fashion deals. I'm talking use code TASHA20 for 20% off. India, India consistently, consistently served looks. Really want her to go down a bit more of like a little jaded club. Like something that like a Love Islander hasn't done before. Because I feel like that whole like ex fast fashion Manchester based clothing brand has been so done before. India and Tasha consistently serve looks to us and for that thank you for your service girls. One fu if I have one fucking beef with this season though, one beef. Love Island producers listen loud and clear. Get a cotton bud and clean your ears out because I need you to listen to this. Ban poster girl dresses. I get okay I get it was sponsored by eBay and a lot of the dresses were coming from eBay but we do not need that same poster girl dress in every- there was one night I think five of the eight girls were wearing a poster girl dress. And on that note, please hire a better stylist next year, Love Island, because some, some of the, I will do it for free if it means we don't get some of these eyesores we had for outfits. If we go, if you could flash your mind back to Mad Movie Night, Billy was wearing what looked like my grandma's curtain in a new look suit form. It looked like a Weatherspoon play. I, I, I can't get words out of my mouth. I'm speechless at some of them. I just, please, please. Like, it doesn't need to be like this. It doesn't. I'm telling you right now, you can find cuter secondhand sustainable clothes on eBay. They were not the best choices, and I know you spent 20 minutes looking for it. Paige, I have a lot of thoughts on Paige and opinions on Paige. And honestly, I don't know if people are going to like this. You need to leave her alone. A lot of what people are picking on her for, like faces, like it is so manipulated in the editing. She could have powered at something 10 minutes ago and the producers could have just put it over that. I don't think Paige deserves to get the amount of hate she's getting. And there are people on the show who have done far, far worse, which once again is going back to the double standards that the show always fucking seems to have and society as a whole. Alongside also Jax, I think Jax has come out actually. And I mean, I don't know him personally, so I can't say, but from his social media, he seems to sort of look back and realized how he spoke to Paige and people in general wasn't great, which is fantastic. Obviously, it would be better if he never did anything in the first place, but if it's already happened now, the only thing that these men who have been fuckheads can do is learn. But I do think that everybody sort of forgot very quickly about what Jax was like with Paige. Like, Paige got so much hate for moving on to Adam, and I'm sorry, Adam, he has his faults, he has his flaws, he is a very, in fact, flawed man. But when you look at the relationship side by side, Jax raised his voice so much to Paige. Jax was very disrespectful to Paige at Casa Amor. He wasn't the nicest to Paige. As far as I'm aware, Adam has been very caring and nice to Paige. So this whole like, <laughs> she's ditched at Jax for this horrible, nasty, evil man. I'm like, you guys are literally pulling things. You're making up your own narratives to fit what you want to happen at this point, but you need to focus your energy on other things and you de like, I don't know. Then other than the final, um, what was my other highlight? I loved the first few weeks of Ek and Sue. I thought she was brilliant before she got like tied down and wiped up, which was obviously fine. But when she had a fight, when she wasn't here to make seasonal girlfriends, when she was crawling, they were BAFTA nominated awarding that made no sense. I want to see her up there at the BAFTAs 2023 nominated for Best Leading Actress in Love Island. I know it's a reality show and she can't be nominated, but that was a performance that I quite frankly have never seen on any EastEnders Killing Eve. What I thought was underrated, Amber from the very start of the season, if you can flash your minds back because I know that bloody feels like a lifetime ago. For some reason, Love Island feels like it just started, but also at the same time, remember Liam? 
Yeah, I miss Liam. I hope Liam's doing swell and well and all things great. I hope his strength and conditioning program, which sounds like a head and shoulders five in one product, is going well for him. But I thought Amber was great. He didn't give a shit, which is what you need to be on Love Island. You need to not care about the public hating you. What made the first few seasons so good is they didn't know how big the show was. Obviously, they knew they were on a TV show, but they didn't know millions and millions of people were watching it, which is why they just did not give a hoot. I loved when Natalia came in. That girl got so much hate. I happened to be kind when it came to Natalia. But I loved her. I thought she was great. Especially because this show gets so boring when it gets to the last two weeks. You know what I mean? We've been through the turbulence of Casa Amor and all the couples at this point are like, blinkers on, don't f look anywhere left, right, or center because we're going to be voted off the island in any second. I feel like Casa Amor is that one like, period of grace where everybody can just be there true to themselves and true to what they're going to do on the outside for a week and everybody will forgive you. Because let me tell you right now, these people either are uh, more stupid or a better person than me depending on how you want to look at the situation because if i came back and i found out that my partner was doing three-way kisses at casa amor they're gonna have to call spanish authorities to hold me back because this is not happening i am not being disrespected on a national news outlet not me saying love island is a news outlet please anyway yeah i thought natalia was great it, the, the last few weeks get boring so she came in and tried to spice something up and i know she came for our mother ekansu but you really wanted to see like natalia versus Tasha, Natalia versus Paige. No, she knew what we wanted, and that was drama and entertainment. And she knew the person to get it out of, which was Ek and Sue. She did the formula right, and we were just we threw we 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 owe Natalia an apology actually. Casa Amor felt like a flop this season. It didn't do anything. Every single partner who cheated, I, cheated is the wrong termination because they're not together. But you know what I mean. Got back together, forgave each other. Their new love interests all went home one by one like freaking dominoes. It made no effect on the villa really, other than Mad Movies Night. But I think next. Next year we need a different twist. We we can't keep beating the same old horse. We need to change Casa more. I think obviously they can never do a proper like whole celebrity love island because there's so many people to get in. Like you're having to get like a cast of 40 single hypothetically 20 to 30 year old love islanders. That's a hard task. Well I think they could do a celebrity Casa more because do you know a good 50% at least and this is me being generous and kind because I'm scared I'm gonna see these people are fame hungry to fuck to go on the show. They are acting like this who are like sort of like everyday person with no sort of like fame prior to the show imagine what they will act like when the celebs come in to the cast or more they are gonna be heads over heels they're gonna be like this is gonna get me my shot in okay magazine you know that shot of them when the man's wearing an awfully fitted suit and the woman's in like a floor left gown and they're taking it like on portrait phone on the iphone mode and they're like Nika's journey actually made me really sad. Hi, just jumping in. For some reason, I have got it stuck in this dumb little pea of a brain inside my skull that Danica's name is pronounced Danica. I don't know why. I know it's wrong, but I don't realize I'm saying it until now I'm editing this back and I'm like, you idiot! That's not her name. So I'm deeply sorry, Danica, that I continue to pronounce your name wrong for the rest of this video. I still love you. Yeah, sorry. She deserved to find someone and I really hope that James, or I've even forgotten his name already. Jesus Christ. <laughs> point of putting those four bombshells in at the end by the way can i just ask but danica bless her when she cried i cried i didn't actually cry but internally you know i was crying in my brain she's so sweet and i hope that she does so well on the outside jay if you ever wanna and i feel like that's all my thoughts on love island this season i feel like it's hard to remember past the like past week because there's so much that goes on i can't keep up but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video if uh, as i said if you want like a little bit of a longer love island video where i can go into a lot more detail about things then let me know other than that i'll see you next time bye